Okay, uh, question 3a. They've given you f at x. And it's equal to x squared minus 7. A asks you just to find the inverse, right? Yeah. So we replace f at x with y. Yeah. So y is equal to x squared minus 7. And we're going to switch the two variables for the inverse. So x and y go into the opposite spot. So x is equal to y squared minus 7. And then the whole point of it is to set it equal to y. And that will give us our inverse. So when you bring 7 over, x plus 7 equals y squared. And then you've got a square root both sides. So y is equal to the root of x plus 7. And you just change the y back into the inverse. So the inverse is equal to root x plus 7. B says, uh, just to find f at 2. So you use the original equation, our first f at x, but they want f at 2 is equal to. So you just replace any variables where x was with the number 2. Okay. Right. So 2 squared is 4 minus 7. f at 2 is negative 3. So you don't do anything to that side? You just keep it? Essentially, you can just keep bringing it down. So it says f at 2 is equal to f at 2 is equal okay. to. So what you're saying is f at 2 is equal to negative 3. Okay. Simple? Yep. Okay. And C, the exact same idea, except there used to be inverse, f at inverse 2. So we use the other function, is equal to the root of 2 plus 7. We replace x with 2. So we get root of 9. Okay. Three. So oh, I like that. I inverse that. 2 is 3. Okay. Easy? Yeah, very. Nice. But she'll probably give harder numbers. Yeah, it'll probably be a little more difficult on the test. Okay, question 11 says the following trig function. y is equal to 2 sine 3 times x minus 30 plus 1. Okay, so on this graph we have x and y. Uh, if we're going to label it, let's just say that you know this is 1, 2, 3. So right away I should draw a graph? Good question. Because B asks for a graph. State the phase angle shift amplitude period. Okay, so sorry. B will be our graph. A, you're right. We only have to state things. So actually, we'll skip down and do A down here. I'll rewrite it again. Y is equal to 2 sine, sine 3 x plus 30. B minus 30. Oops. Minus 30. Plus 1. Okay. So... First thing we're talking about, um, state the phase angle shift, the amplitude, the period, and the vertical shift. Okay? So, um, you use different letters from what I remember. You have Y. I think this is an A for you, mm -hmm. right? Sine. Is this K maybe? K. K. And then what do you have? C? That's C. Negative C and plus D? No, 1 is C. Oh, 1 is C and? I think 30 is D. 30 is D? Oh, okay. C, D, and C. Okay, um, here's what's important. A deals with amplitude shifts. Okay. So it's going to make a graph go from being something like this to something much higher and lower. Okay, okay? deals with amplitude shifts. So, uh, that's your A. K de deals with um, period shifts. There's a different color there. So K is a period shift. So instead of saying, you know, the period of a sine wave is 360 degrees, mm -hmm. the period shift may get a much longer, so it's something like that, or it may get much smaller your period. It does stuff like that, okay, okay in comparison. Um, the rule is you take the number, whatever your K is, mm -hmm. and you take 360 and divide it by K to find out the new period. So let's say k is, so originally k is normally 1 in normal graph, so we have 360 divided by k. That, should, that tells you your period, okay? okay? So your period is equal to 360 divided by k. If k is just 1, your period is 360. Yeah. Anytime k changes, you divide 360 by it, and it'll tell you how long so your period is. Right? Um, yeah, and the next one is going to be 120. That's right. Uh, D deals with... 
a horizontal shifts left and right, so the whole function shifts. So What's the phase angle shift then? Amplitude period phase angle shift probably deals with your x y is what they're talking about because that's a shift. D is a shift and C is a shift. K is a change in period. A is a change in amplitude. So then that means it just means a horizontal shift. So D. Yeah. So D is your phase angle okay. shift. So essentially, if you have some graph that's like this. Uh, then it the whole thing maybe moves over this many steps. Mm -hmm. So it's moved left and right horizontally. So, it goes so this way 30, or this way. Different. Yeah, but the only difference is you remember with parabola, because it's negative 30, we move it in a positive direction. So the whole thing shifts to the right instead. But when you take it out of the bracket, isn't it 30? Yes. Positive 30? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And finally, um, C deals with vertical shifts. So. Say you have a sine wave like that, the vertical shift is it's just higher up than it was before. So it either moves up or down. That's what those ones deal with. Okay? So when we go to write this out, um, first thing, our amplitude. In a normal sine graph, I'm going to show you some normal It's just y equals sine x. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, when it's y equals sine x, I'll tell you what the letters are. A is equal to 1. This imaginary 1 here. Okay, one time sign, so I can change anything. Shouldn't do it in the black. Shouldn't do it in the black. Yeah, so you have an imaginary one here. K is also one. You have an imaginary one there. So K is equal to one. Um, D is zero. There's nothing added or subtracted to the X. And there's nothing added or subtracted to the entire equation. So C is also zero. So that's our normal one. Okay. okay? And our normal one. A period, or sorry, let's say amplitude Tude is 1. Amplitude is pretty much always what A is. So A is 1, so in our original, our amplitude is 1. Whenever A changes, that's what our new amplitude is. Right? Um, period is 360, because we did 360 divided by K. So our period is 360 in that one. And there's no uh, phase angle shifts or vertical shifts. Okay, so in our new one, what you've noticed is um, our amplitude has changed. What is our amplitude in our new Two. one? Yeah, so amplitude is 2 because of our A. So our amplitude is 2. Uh, our phase, or not phase, our period, the change in the period is now what? 120. Yeah, so our period is now, so period. We took 360, divided it by 3. Our period is now 120 degrees. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else we got here? Uh, phase angle shift. So what is the horizontal shift of this? 30. Yeah. So phase angle shift. So I'm going to put a horizontal shift. I'm going to say 30 degrees to the right. Okay. And finally, running out of colors here, our vertical. Can you read this? I really don't think so. Not that one. No. Let's see if we can get a better one than that. Yeah, this way just do that. Our vertical shift is one unit. It is yeah, just is equal to one unit, and it's positive, so up one unit up. Okay. So that's A. Um, sketch one cycle of this graph. Okay. So this is where we go back up. So we've had a couple things change on this graph. Uh, okay. So one cycle. One cycle of the graph, because the period has changed, that means our one cycle is only going to be 120 degrees. Yeah. Okay. So normally on a normal graph, you have to shift or you have to draw one cycle would be 360. So we go right up to 360. But because our period has changed, um, our entire our, our cycle has changed. So uh, we'll draw our original one just so we have know how to move away from it. So in our original one, we're at zero. 
is zero. Should I memorize this for the exam? You might want to memorize what, one? yeah, the original one, so you understand, because it's the same idea with the parabola. Make sure you can draw an original one, so it's easier to shift it. So, our new one. Our original one is 90s 1, 180 0. 270 is negative 1. Yeah, but I've drawn this graph a little funny. The scale here. I should have been 3 down. So that should need to move in that way. It's okay. I think you did it fine. 270 and then 360. So, one cycle would look like this. Okay? So that's an original. That's a y equals sine x. Okay? Uh, first thing we can change is the amplitude. Uh, we know the amplitude of the graph. What do we color with doing amplitude in red? Yeah. The amplitude of the graph changes the two. So think of the graph to be now like this. Instead of going up one, it goes up two. Zero select the same spot. Down two. Zero select the same spot. So when I go to commit, this is like, call this the first shift, okay? So it's up like that. Comes down. And up again. Okay, so it's been stretched. But how did that go up two if it's only up two with one? Because our amplitude is now two. So remember our, our Oh it just goes to two? Or yeah, it just goes to two. two. Yeah. It doesn't get shifted up, it's just the amplitude, so it's been stretched oh. by two. The zeros are still the same. Think of it like whatever your A is, take your original, which our original is multiplied by one. That's the new number we're gonna stretch it to. Okay. Okay. Um okay. Next thing we're going to do is our period shift. So normally it's 360. Everything is, think of it as it takes a third of a long, as long to get there. So instead of being at 90 to reach 2, a third as long is at 30 degrees. So at 30 degrees, we're now at 2. Okay, okay so we divide, divide all of our key points by 3. Okay, 0 still stays at 0. Okay. 90, when you divide by 3, is at 30. So this point here, what color we were doing in the blue, right? It's now at 30. So a third of the way, let's say, is about here. Okay? So that's where our 2 is. Take 180 divided by 3, we're at 60. Okay? 60 is about here. So now we're at 0 there. So we have two points already. We're coming up like this. See how the periods change? It's, it's squished, you could say. Wait, you missed 30 quarter. degrees. 30 degrees was up here. I move this back a third, I move this back a third, I'm going to move this back a third now. So 270 divided by 3 is at 90. So at 90, it's now at negative 2. And 360 divided by 3 is 120. So at 120, it's at 0 again. So when I connected the dots... How do you, like, what if I wanted to do an all one? What if you wanted to do it... Like an all one thing, like instead of doing like the different colors. In all one shift, yeah, you'd have to do it all kind of in your head. So you have to know to stretch it by two, compress it by a third, and then we're gonna have to phase shift it too. We're gonna have to go left and right and up and down. There's four different movements here. Okay. You okay with it? Yeah. Okay. So does this part make sense? We mm -hmm. squished it in by third. Okay. The next two are a little easier. Um, Horizontal shift 30 degrees to the right. So think of this now as I'm doing a different color just so it's easier to see. Everything is shifted to the right 30 degrees. So we go this way 30 degrees. So instead of zero being at zero, now here, remember this is about 30 degrees. This is about 30 degrees away. So this gets shifted 30. This point gets shifted 30, which is at 90. This point down here gets shifted 30, so it's at about 120. And this shift gets put at 30. So this now is the same thing, but it's been shifted 30 to the right. It gets really complicated in there. What's a little easier if you make this graph longer? Like if we did the scale by 30, it'd be a lot easier to see. Do you want me to do it by 30? No, okay. So you understand it's all, the blue one is now wait, shifted to so the wait, right. Wait, what's the green one? The green one is we've done three. We've done this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Okay, so we've stretched it up, we've compressed it, and we've shifted it 30 degrees to the what right. What did you just do now? I shifted the blue to the green. By what? 30 degrees. Everything moves 30 okay. degrees to the right. So everything, so this point went there, went there. How did this one, like, why didn't that point have to go to 
the two, the ampere or when I stretched it, the amplitude. Think of it like um, whatever number you used to be at on the y-axis, you multiply that by a. So. So our a was 2, right? In our original, when I'm at 0, my y is 0. So I multiply 2 by 0, I'm still at 0. There's no change. My next one, when I'm at 90, y is 1. So I multiply 1 by 2, I go to 2. The next point, 180 is at 0 again. 0 by 2, I'm at 0 again. Can you make um, a xy chart for this? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can make an XY chart for this. Um, let me just do the last shift for you, and then we'll do an XY chart. And finally, we'll do the last one in black again. So we're at the green one now. It's all shifted up one unit, okay? So everything moves up a unit. So this is at 0. It now goes up to 1, right? This was at 2. This now goes up to 3. This is at 0. It goes up to 1. So that negative 2 goes up to negative 1. And this is at 0, it goes up to 1. So our final graph is this one I've just drawn in black. Okay. It's really complicated to see because it's all squished together. That is so hard to see. It would have been easier if I did this in the 30s. Um, what you can do for an XY chart is you do your X and your Y. The only difference with the XY chart is it gets a little difficult because um, unless you know what key points to put it in at, uh, it'll get confusing. So, um, whatever. Okay, same type of question. This time we're going to make the scale by 30. So 30, 60. How do you know what to make the scale by? Um, what's a good indicator of the scale is the a question and our phase shifts. So remember, our question was y is equal to 2 sine 3, right? Mm -hmm. The 3 is going to help us with our x scale. Luckily, they told us I needed a shift of 30 degrees. That's a pretty good indicator that it'll be easiest to see if I make it by 30. I just got to make sure it can fit in my graph, okay? Plus 1. My amplitude and my plus, so my a and my, is that c for you? Yeah. C. A and c are going to let us know the y-axis. Luckily, amplitude, I know quickly off the top of my head, is going to go up to 2. And then I'm going to be shifting up 1, so it's going to go up to 3. So I know that I can go up 1, 2, 3. That's how I knew how high to make it and how low. However high I'm going to go, I'm probably going to need to go just as low. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So 90, 120, uh, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270. 360. So again, look, we're, I'm going to do all four again. But if you're implemented with like... That's not 360, it's 300. Um, like amplitude, your D was 20. Did you go by 20? If my D, so in here was 20. Yeah, you could do by 20s because it'll be easier to see your phase shifts. Because it's going to hit 90. So you're just... So you're going to have to estimate where your 90 is going to be. It's usually to go, it's best to go by multiples of the original. So 30 is a multiple of the original. What I mean by the original is 0, 0, 90 is 1, 180 is 0, 270 is negative 1, and then 360 is 0. I had to extend it a little. Okay. So this is an original. I want the best of drawings. So that's our original there. Okay. Key 5 points. 0 and 0 is 1. 90 and 1. 180 and 0, 270 and negative 1, and then 360, 0. Those are five key points you need to know, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, again, remember we did our amplitude. Our amplitude was our A. So what that's going to mean is, remember, here Y is 0. I multiply by 2. I'm still at 0. Can we, can we not do the 4, though? Because, like, I don't think I would do four different ones. Which one do you think you can... Like, I swear my teacher never did four different translations, like, at one time. Like, four different graphs. For this one, there are four translations. Do you want me to, um... So you have to do four different... Want me to do one, and then do a new graph, and then shift that one, do a new graph, shift that one? Maybe it'll be easier to see that way? No, like, I, I can see it, but 
I don't think I have any time. I can change the question. No, no, no. Cause there are four shifts in this one. So you have to do four. You have to do four different shifts from the original. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you can talk me through it. What would I do with this one here if we're talking about a? Go up two. Yeah. So it's, instead of being at one, it's not two. What about here? Where's this going to be? Let's go there. Yeah. Okay. Because two times zero is zero. Negative one times two. Negative two. Yeah. So we're down here. And zero times two. Yeah. Zero again. So this is the idea. So you're multiplying the number. Multiplying my y by a. Okay. Whatever the y value is, I multiply by a. Goes up like that. Comes right back through that same spot. Down like that. Up to that same spot. So this is our amplitude shift. That's why our amplitude is now two. Amplitude is um, the distance from the middle of the wave to the peak or to the trough, the highest or lowest point. Okay. Okay. So our old one was one. It's now two because of this. Okay. So we've dealt with that. That's finished. Period shift. That this is kind of where it got complicated because it made it really small. Um, our period shift, you recognized, uh, we had to do 360 divided by three, gives 120. Okay. Mm -hmm. So think of all these five key points. One, two, three, four. Well, and this is five. Right. This is going to stay the same. The spot. Our key points on the x. Whatever our x is now, we're dividing it by 3. We divide it by k. So remember, in this one, we multiplied by 2. So I'm going to say multiplied by y. Okay, that was the idea there. This one, you're going to divide x by Wait, didn't it. Didn't you multiply 2 by y? Yeah. It doesn't matter the order for multiplication. It does for division. But it says 2 divided by y. Oh, time. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just underlined it. No, no, it's okay. I just thought those divided. Was I'll, get, I'll get rid of that. Okay. I think it is sense. times y. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, I wish I had more room at the top. Um, it's x divided by that number. Okay? So it's not 3 divided by x, it's x divided by that. Uh, what letters you use? k. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's x divided by k. Why well, did you need the 120 then? The 120 tells us how long our one period is. Okay? So. Our x here, what is 0 divided by 3? Oh, zero. 0. So it still stays at the exact same spot. We're still there. Now here's our next point, okay? 90 divided by 3. 30. 30. So this y now shifts over to 30, okay? Mm -hmm. So it gets up much quicker. Um, here's another key point. 0, oh sorry, not 0, 180 divided by 3. No, no, no. It's okay, just cut there. 60. So this spot at 0 is now at 60. 270 divided by 3? It was 120, right? Uh, huh? Nope. 90. Yeah. And oh, finally, 360 okay. divided by 3. 120. 120. So, think of it like an accordion. It used to be really stretched, and now it's been squished in. So this is one cycle. Technically, it continues this on and on and on, but they told us to draw one cycle, so mm -hmm. I'm only drawing one cycle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So from our black one, we stretched it, and then we compressed it almost. Think of it like that. We pulled it upwards, and then we squished it in horizontally. So now I've dealt with my uh, A and K. Now this is our phase shift, right? It says 30 degrees, but it's to the right because it's negative. So I'll do that one in green, okay? So all we have to do is the exact same shape, Everything just goes over 30. So you're not moving, shifting things from the original graph. You're shifting from the last translation. Yeah, from the last. always shift it from the last translation. Okay. Yeah. So this one goes 30 to the right. This one goes 30 to the right. That's why going by 30, so this was really easy. It was one unit on the graph. Okay. That's why I made the scale by 30. It was easier to go. So this goes 30 to the right. This goes 30 to the right. And this goes 30 to the right. So our new one, from the blue to the green now. So now we're at the green part. Okay? So you multiplied the x by 30? I mean 30? I mean added 30. I added. I added 30. So we'll say add what letter is that? So x d. plus d we're going to say, okay? That's what you do for that. You do x plus d. Whatever d is, you add that. Um, 
you do realize D is just this, not the negative, right? Yeah. I don't want you to get confused there. Yeah. That makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And finally, C. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it in black. C is Y plus whatever C is. Okay? So get your Y values. Right? So Y is 0 on this one. I add 1 to it. So now it's at 1. Okay? Here, 2 plus 1 is 3. Three. Um, I'm at the green one. That's the green one. Okay. Referring to. Got it. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So confusing. I know. There's a lot of shifts to this. Okay. So that one's still the same. No, this one goes up. Because we're adding. It yeah, is going to change. So it's like, it's that one though. Yeah, it's this yeah, one. It's, it's just we used one. to, yeah, we used to reach that point at some point. This one goes up one. So it goes to negative one instead of being at negative two. And this one goes up one. So it's here. So now, when I connect the dots. The black graph. The last one we just drew. These are four shifts. Four. So that's our one there. If I could, I would erase. Do you want me to erase all the other ones and see no, what this looks like? No, because on like the exam, I'm still going to have all the lines. So how would I say You, you can't one? erase them all. After, yeah, I guess. You could. Like, if you wanted, I could. Do you want me to do that now? So you no, can see no, what no, no. Like? I, I get it. Okay, sometimes, like, what I ask the students to do is I actually ask, I tell them to include all four shifts. Mm -hmm. Because I want to make sure they know how to go from one to each to the other. Well, I wouldn't really know how to do it without the, well, without the other ones. Yeah. yeah, it gets really hard to do this all in your head. Like, it's quite complicated to go from that long black one to this thin black one here. Uh -huh. It gets really confusing to do all the steps in your head. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this question says, tan x times sine x plus cos x equals 1 divided by cos x, right? Mm -hmm. So you can almost think of these as they're multiplied by each other. I hate these. Which is are different, okay? Um... There's a lot more on the left side. So we're going to work with the left side and try to set it equal yeah. to the right side. Of course, we could always do both. We could always work on both and change them to something where they're both equal, but we'll work on the left side for now. Yeah, so we'll work with the left side. Uh, I'm going to have to steal your mm -hmm. rules here for a second. So let's take a look at these. Luckily, nothing squared. Okay. So what that means is what we're doing with pretty much quotient identities and reciprocal identities. Okay. Um, reciprocal identity, we know that secant is equal to 1 over cos x, right? So we could deal with that, but we don't really have anything else that equals secant, so we're not going to actually deal with that. We're going to work with our quotient identity. So what I'm going to do is pretty much let's try to change everything into cos if we can. Okay? We have cos on the other side. So my tangent... Yeah, I see that right away. Yeah, this one, tangent on the sine. And I don't want to do sine. What's important to know is sine can also be equal to cos and tan together. Well, let's do it one at a time. So tangent, by our rules, we know is sine x divided by cos x, right? Sine x plus cos x one over cos x. Okay, I could multiply these, and I'd have sine squared x divided by cos x. Mm. I'm still running into, then I start getting into Pythagorean identities because I'm dealing with squared, so maybe not a route I want to take. But like I said, there's like a million different ways we could go through this. Um, maybe what we want to do is put everything into a fraction form. So you see how this is a denominator of cos x? We could technically put everything into a denominator of cos x, change all of our oops, fractions to that. But then again, we're going to get squares. So, do you have any ideas of where we could go from here? Okay. So, what we decided to do is we're going to multiply these two, and then we're going to change the fraction bottom. So, sine x times sine x is going to give us sine squared x over cos x plus cos x is 1 over cos x. Okay? Now, this is technically a fraction. So, if I'm going to change it to a denominator of cos x, it's going to be cos x squared on the top. Of yeah, x exactly. I have to. And then that equals one. And then the bottom is like this. There you go. Okay, I get it, but I can't do that on my own. Okay, well, we'll have to practice <laughs> this. So, let's make sure we write it down, everything you said. Okay. So, 
you're right. Uh, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cos x. So cos x times cos x is cos squared x over um, cos x. Okay. And now we can add these, right? Sorry, we're not, I shouldn't have been bringing down the right side. We're still with the left side. Um, because the denominators are the same, we'll just put the tops together. Over cos x. And from our identities, we realize that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So, da 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 da, 1. Okay, let me write that down. So, cos if x. I look at it at home, I will understand. I'm pretty sure I can print these, so fix the printer. Yeah, but I can print these notes for you, okay? I'll just write it like But it's sine minus cos. Oh, and they have plus. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Good point. I thought it was. Okay, so we're going to try something. We're going to work on the left side, okay? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to work with the left side. Sine 4x. I can split that. I know that if I kind of split it into two multiplications, it's sine squared x times sine squared x. Does that make sense to you? Why is it plus? Why is it multiplied by? Mm -hmm. um, well, think of it like this. What if I had done... Um, what is sine x times sine x? Sine squared x. Sine squared x, right? And all you did, imagine there was an exponent here, you just added those exponents together. So in this one, we have exponent of 2 and 2, and we add them together and we've got 4. four. Right? So think of this like I've split the equation a little. The whole reason I chose sine squared x is because I have identities to mm -hmm. that. I know I can change that into something. Okay, And the same idea goes with the cos. So it becomes minus cos squared x, cos squared x, okay? Yeah, I just don't know why I said, like, ugh, okay. I'm just trying to get into something. No, 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 I know, but it makes it harder because it's minus. Yes, I know, yeah, it's not plus, so it's not an easy one, so yeah. you got to think your way through it a little. Um, we have values for sine squared x. Uh, in your identities, I'm going to do this in blue here, your rule is sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1? Yep. Well, if I want to find out what sine squared x is, I just move cos to the other side. So sine squared x is also equal to 1 subtract cos squared x. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in other words, I can replace my sine squared x's with those values there. Kay. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to put everything in cos form because mm -hmm. they're willing with cos on the other side, right? So, I'm going to replace both my sine squared x's with 1 minus cos squared x, 1 minus cos squared x, minus cos squared x, cos squared x. Okay? So, I've done that now. So, the blue is just side calculation. Okay? Uh, technically, if you look at this, there's two terms in each bracket. If I want to simplify that, do you know what I would do? do yeah, and what's that called when we expand it? Yeah, I could foil this. So I'm going to try to foil this. Let's okay. see if it's going to take me anywhere. Okay? So our 1 times 1, 1. 1 times negative cos x is negative cos, sorry, okay. squared x. Thank you. Negative cos squared x times 1 is negative cos squared x. And finally, negative cos squared x times negative cos squared x is plus cos 4x. Okay. All minus cos squared x. But there's no way I can do it on my own. Like, I'm not trying to. All we're trying to do is move things around. Yeah. I have no idea what direction I'm going. I'm just trying to push things in to see if I can go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. I can simplify this. It becomes 1. You know what this becomes are two middle terms. Two. So it becomes negative two cos squared x. Right. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Minus two. You don't change the exponents. Cos squared. You're adding. Yeah, because we're adding or subtracting, okay. we don't do anything in the exponents. And this is cos four x. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this says minus. I'm gonna write this again. Wait, what's the right side? What are the right side? I'll show you in a second. Uh, okay, got it. We're getting really, really close, actually. Okay, so you remember what the right side is? I can drop these brackets now, okay? 
And actually what I'm going to do is, I know this might confuse you a little, I'm going to recombine my cos squared x's. Okay. The reason is, is because I have a cos 4x okay. over here, so I'm going to see if I can eliminate them, okay? So I have 1 minus cos squared x plus cos 4x minus cos 4x, okay? So what I'm going to do is drop all my brackets and collect like terms, okay? okay? So I drop my brackets, I have 1 minus... 2 cos squared no, x. that minus that equals 0. Yeah, you're right. Cos 4x minus cos 4x. These two just cancel each other out. And there's your answer. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to do that. Square x. That's your right side of you. There's a lot to it. I'd rather not get Think of it like a riddle. You know what you'll do? Is on your exam. <sighs> Leave identities to last. Make sure you can answer everything else first. Okay. Do everything you can, and Good then idea. spend time working on these. See if you can go anywhere with them. Because even going, like, usually identities worth several marks. So, I don't oh. know, she... Six. Yeah, so, you know, if it's worth six marks, say you only get halfway, at least you got three of the marks, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, I need to copy this. Yeah. You want me to just print it for you? Sure. Yeah, we'll just do that so we can keep moving, okay? Ready? Okay. okay, so let's, oops, let's get up a draft here. Okay. Stretch it a little. Okay. So you're good. You're able to figure out that this was the original, right? Mm -hmm. And you discovered that the new equation was y was equal to 5 root of x uh, minus, minus 2, two. Plus, minus minus four. 4. Sorry. Okay. And there was an A, a C, and a D, no K. So, first off, the original is of a parabola. It goes like this. We have our vertex at 0 and 0. Over 1, up 1. If I go over 2, how many do go up? 4. Yep. See, you do remember it. Over 3, how many go up? 9. Yeah, very simple, right? Okay. So that's of a parabola. The problem is, are we doing squared? No. no, we're doing square rooted. So, instead of going upwards, we're going to go to the right. right. Okay? So we start at 0. We go up 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So think of it being sideways. Up 2, how many do I go over? 2, um, 4. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. Three. Okay, wait. So just because it's square rooted, you know it's going to go like that? So yeah, square rooted is going to go to our right. It's going to be facing our right. Okay. okay? Unless it's negative, then it's inverted, right? Just like a negative parabola. Well, I'm okay. going to pray that there's no negative on there. Think through it. You'll be able to do it. And if we go up 3, we go over 9, right? So this is our original. This is a y equals the root of x. Okay? That's the original graph. Think of it the same rules as a parabola. Okay? Let's do our phase shifts. Uh... Or actually, sorry, let's do our stretch first. It's stretched by a factor of 5. Right. So what does that mean? When I go up 1, instead of going to the right 1, I go to the right uh, 5. Remember, you multiply whatever you're going up. This is where I get so confusing things. So, remember on the original parabola, I said when you go over 1, whatever you're going up by, you multiply by your A. It's the same idea, except... You know, instead of going up on this one, we're constantly going to the right. Okay. So you go over one. Yeah. And then one times five is five. So yeah. one, two, three, four, five. Hey, there you go. That's the first shift. Good. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then what if we were to go down two? How okay. many would I supposed to be Wait, going down over? two? Yeah. So remember, we do it down one over oh, five. Oh, okay. So up one over or five. up two, either one, right? Yeah. Okay. If we so go up two. Up two. And then... Normally, we go to the right. Isn't it 20? Yeah. Can we fit that? No. No. But that's right. That would be the number. We go 20. So let's just kind of go like this for now, okay? So there's our stretch. Now, normally, we do the stretches last. I just want to make sure you could do it. Okay? So we have our stretch. Okay. Let's deal with our vertex. So we don't have to... I'm going to actually erase my stretch because I like dealing with the vertex. So I just want to make sure you still understood that idea. You don't have to erase it. It'll be fine. So it'll be okay. I hate math. I know. 
Can't wait till you hear that on the recording. <laughs> okay. This is our vertex, okay? Yeah. Same idea with horizontal and vertical translations, okay? Uh, this is a horizontal translation. How many? Two to the right. Two to the right. So our vertex now moves one, two. Or two to the right, and how, how many down? Four to. One, two, three, four. So, so that's the vertex. That's the new vertex, and we just got to stretch it from there. <sighs> so two to the right. No, we went. Yeah, we went two to the right, oh, yeah. and we went two. down four, right? We went. Okay. Okay. So two and two. And now, how how do you stretch it? Stretch it from there. Normally, you go up one, over one. How many do we have to go over by? Up one over. Oh wait, up. How do you know what you go up by? We always go from the vertex. You always choose how many you want to move away from the vertex. You can go up a, a billion, right? You just got to square that number after. Oh, uh, so you, go, you can go by one. Yeah. So if I go up by one, I normally go to the right by one because that's one squared. Mm -hmm. But what do I have to multiply by? Five, so go up one over. And same idea with down and squared, right? So this is our parabola essentially. Well, it's not a parabola, sorry. Okay, wait. Uh, okay. So vertex move. What was keys? Two vertex shifts, right? Over mm -hmm. and down. So over two, down four. So you only do that for the vertex? Only move, yeah. Those only deal with so the So that doesn't ha like, you're not, like, every shift is not, like, moving right to and down four. It's just that. Just the vertex? Just the vertex. Oh, that's easier. Yeah, just the vertex. It's and not like the a sine wave. The sine wave, the whole thing moves. <laughs> so then, it's always over one or over two squared yep. multiplied by A. Yep. <laughs> See how fast you learn? Over one, 